So, as Bloodborne 2 could maybe be a thing, and Sony would be retarded not to do it, a wish list for things we want to see in Bloodborne 2 seems like something we should maybe talk about. And it seems like FromSoft would appear to be keeping an eye on my videos, so hopefully they listen up. So, as this is one of my more hypothetical videos, I generally like to keep my ideas in the realms of possibility, however, some of my ideas are a little bit more outlandish than usual, so I'm going to start them from the least outlandish and work my way to the most. So, let's just get into the list, and starting with number one. So, number two is just more loot uh, and things to find, just making exploration more rewarding. Now, I'm sure everybody can agree on this point, and it really goes without saying, doesn't it? I just simply just want more. I'll get into potential things that could be added into the game later in the video, but for now, conceptually, I just want more stuff in the game. Bloodborne had the potential for a lot of different weapons, and the DLC definitely did expand on this, and it had a good density in terms of what you could find. But even then, when you compare it to Dark Souls 2, you were finding stuff all over the place in that game. Now, some idiots would say that Dark Souls 2 went down the route of quantity over quality, despite the fact that all they were doing was giving you a lot of choice, and how's that a bad thing? Anyway, I'd say that Bloodborne doesn't need to have anywhere near as much as Dark Souls 2 does. It doesn't even need to be as long as Dark Souls 2, but the crux of the problem is Bloodborne had so few things to actually find, especially considering you bought a lot of the items that you wanted, and I'd argue that the game would have fared a lot better had you found these items instead of buying them, it made the exploration feel really unrewarding. Not only this, with Bloodborne for the most part, you'd just find one weapon and stick with that for the entire rest of the game. So when you did find other things, sometimes you didn't really care because you just couldn't use them. I mean, our guide uses the first armour set and the first weapon you get for the full fucking thing. Look, I know this isn't going to be the case for every person, but really the point I'm making is that in Dark Souls 2, you know, the, the game threw a lot of different variations of one type of weapon at you. So sometimes you're playing through the game and you'd get like a, basically just a better version of what you have, but you just don't have that in Bloodborne and then you just get lots and lots of shit that you're definitely never going to use. So even if my further ideas wouldn't be realistic, I feel like, you know, I'd be expecting at least twice as many weapons and armors in Bloodborne 2 within the same size of game generally. So point number three, let's take away farming and the need to level up at the Hunter's Dream. So, let's name this point, stop making me have to stop playing the fucking game. If there's anything that stopped Bloodborne in its tracks, it was the amount of time spent not actually playing the game. At least several hours of my life have been spent farming vials and bullets. Not so much bullets, but definitely vials. As well as spending time warping back and forth from the Hunter's Dream. Nobody could possibly disagree with this point, surely. In my head, it just feels like they could expand upon the rally system. Now, I'm just spitballing ideas, but perhaps you could salvage blood from defeated enemies, and the more you keep attacking them, the more blood they produce, and that fills your vials for you, like up to a certain point. This also sticks with the encouraging aggressive tactics thing they've got going. I suppose this is technically farming, but it means you can get vials as you go through a level. Now, I'm not saying this, but something like this. But not this, but maybe this? Or just have it like Dark Souls where you get a fixed amount each life, it fucking worked. You know, then you can find more vials to increase the amount permanently. Or perhaps, armors have an amount of slots that affect the amount of vials you can carry. Just something fucking other than farming the same fucking spot over and over. In terms of leveling, they've had five fucking games to do this correctly, and yet somehow, they still just can't copy Dark Souls 1. They could literally patch this in every game, it would take about a day worth of coding, I'd bet. Which brings me on to the next point. Like Dark Souls 1, let's just remove warping until the halfway point at least. And when you do get it, allow warping between bonfires from each bonfire. Well, well, lantern. Possibly allow only one way warping back to like a central hub area, but you know, I'd, I'd say that would be the maximum. And this way it allows that any shortcuts or any interconnected areas can actually be used for gameplay as opposed to just going completely unused like in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3. And indeed Bloodborne actually. Okay, so point number five, and it's going to be a bit of a decisive one, I feel, and that's no random gem loot. I really disliked it, and I understand that it was meant as a way of distancing itself from Dark Souls, but ultimately it like worked and it didn't work. I, right, okay, let me explain. Even though the gems are random, you still find fixed value gems in the world. They don't do anywhere near enough interesting things in order to make them worthwhile. 
I don't know anyone that would pick a gem that done anything other than just increase your physical damage, unless they were fighting an enemy specific to one kind of damage, and even then, you'd just put on the lightning damage on the Tonitrus and be done with it. The, the gems are obviously put into the game in order to keep your damage scaling with Chalice Dungeons, you know, once you max your weapon level. I feel like this is a bit of an issue, as the dungeons were pretty garbage, and more damage equals more difficulty is like the fucking worst way to go about things, really. I'd personally prefer things to be more like Dark Souls 3, or, you know, have a system somewhat like what I'm going to talk about later in the video, which I think would fit Bloodborne a lot better. The other half of this is it just comes down to random loot, I feel, doesn't work in a Dark Souls style game. It's certainly not as bad as Neo, which made exploration so fucking mundane with its loot system. Oh look, I found a bigger number! I say this because I feel like Souls makes exploration fairly rewarding, as every new thing you find is essentially a unique item with its own pros and cons, and you know, you want to try things out, so a system that gives you the potential to use every new thing you find is what I would say would be the best way to go about things, uh, hence, right, okay, you'll see later in the video what I'm talking about anyway. So I feel like I make this point in almost every video I've ever made, but an arena. I feel like lore-wise it could fit into Bloodborne as some kind of gentleman's fighting club. I want to make the argument that the game needs an arena because PvP was impossible to get in Bloodborne 1, but this is a bit of a fallacy as we're talking about a hypothetical game, so we can make our own rules and say that PvP would just be much better, which I'm going to get to anyway, obviously. However, a dedicated arena would be pretty nice, and you know, it's always welcome. It was great fun in Dark Souls 3, so I mean, why not? Alright, so I'd definitely make this point in every fucking video, but a more interconnected world, or rather, with the removal of warping, allows shortcuts between areas to actually be fucking usable. Bloodborne had shortcuts and links to and from areas, but just they meant fucking nothing, as you could just warp anywhere. Now, the reason Dark Souls 1 worked was that, you know, the world design facilitated the need to go back and forth directly through Firelink Shrine a bunch of times, via a vertical world design, so there's no need to copy this vertical design when you could do the same thing via a horizontal design and maybe three or four rings worth of areas, as this diagram will hopefully show, with central Yarnum being a huge multi-layered city with various entrances that connect to the other areas. This acts as essentially a huge hub for the game, but also an area for multiplayer fun. This also would have less classic Souls style level design to it and more of like an actual open city layout. You could have levels within the city that are created via blockages and gates that are more classic Souls style and once they're open they will progressively open the levels into the full city layout. Just as a side note, I personally love an interconnected world with the end area essentially being a giant castle a la Kanehurst but taking to its logical conclusion in terms of being a full fucking castle with various different ways of getting through it, you know, puzzles, secret passages, secret areas and things to do with your build. This will never happen, but a boy can fucking dream! Alright, so we're on to number 8 now, and that's abilities slash ways to play the game can affect how you progress through the game. Kill one boss, get X item, allows you to skip Y area if you've invested in it, or level up a character A way will let you steamroll a higher area boss that's weak to that thing and let you have access to even higher level shit, etc. Good examples of this would be, in Demon Souls you can skip doing 2-1 until much later when you have fire resistance and then skip half the level by just walking over the lava really quickly. This is really good design in my opinion as it lets your build affect the gameplay just outside of combat. Again, how you play is important as well, it doesn't need to be all based around your build, just more things based around observation that allow for shortcuts, that can be a thing as well. For example, the boxes in the Lost Bastille. If you come from the wharf, you can't get to the bonfire that Eagle lands you at because the boxes are blocking the door, but you can smash the boxes from the outside and then open the door. Deus Ex is filled with this kind of shite, and it's 10 out of 10 design. It, it, just, it fits beautifully into how Dark Souls works. Now, I make this point specifically, as Bloodborne lets you skip a lot of it if you want to. A huge amount of Bloodborne 1 is optional, let's keep Bloodborne 2 the same way. Alright, so on to number 9 and that is, let's have insight actually mean something. As insight increases, have more things happen in terms of shortcuts appearing, hidden areas, item drops, difficulty, new NPCs, and just, you know, warping the fuck out of the scenery. Just have it affect gameplay in some way. Keep the trading of insight for items, like in Bloodborne 1, but, you know, whilst it has all these other effects, it just means that it really has a lot of value, and you need to think about if you actually want to give up your insight for whatever it is that you're buying. So, you could have Madman's knowledge kind of work like humanity, 
in the sense that, you know, um, they'd give you HP if you pop them, but at the same time they could be sold for blood. And, you know, if you pop them it could somehow boost difficulty, giving us kind of risk reward to using one in a pinch. Basically, this means to complete the game, uh, you'd have to do it on a high insight run. Essentially giving insight a huge value to players. Being able to bank insight permanently is probably a good idea in this case, which would keep all the changes and increase difficulty a bit. Uh, having such a high value on it would also allow great shenanigans for a covenant that focuses on stealing insight from other players. I had similar suggestions for like Humanity or Embers and other Dark Souls games. Essentially, giving these items such high value means that when you find them and when you get them, it's actually like, you know, rewarding, it's something that you're trying to at attain and strive for. Whereas Insight in Bloodborne 1 literally meant, well it didn't literally mean nothing, but it basically meant nothing, like no one gave a fuck about it. So let me care about it, you know? Alright, so we're on to number 10 now. And I think that Covenant quests should be able to affect the story and perhaps even have multiple endings. There are, after all, multiple factions in Bloodborne, and I feel like this concept fits Bloodborne more than Dark Souls, as Dark Souls is about cycles of the same thing. Bloodborne could be its own entity in terms of story and endings. I mean, I can see four immediately, the, so the two church factions, a faction that wants everyone to be beasts and a faction that's trying to stop others from stopping the aliens or whatever. Again, just spitballing ideas here. You can also have, you know, inter-faction rivals, such as you could have a faction devoted to hunting down all the beasts, hence, you know, they're against the faction that wants to, everyone to become beasts. Uh, you know, that insight stealing faction I spoke about. Of course, there'd be a factionless ending as well, but I'd really like to see this in the game. Having Bloodborne 2 play its strengths of Bloodborne 1 and have many optional things in the game just means that everybody's first playthrough can be just really different and unique experiences. Number 11, and we're getting really into hypothetical territory here, and that is an extra stat slash way to play the game. Bloodborne would really benefit from more build variety, so I propose a tech stat, allowing you to use various gadgets that give you abilities. So the distinction is that Arcane lets you cast defensive spells, possibly having higher level runes as well, only usable with higher Arcane stat, and the tech stat would allow you to equip mods and abilities. I feel like this would fit the Victorian theme as janky steampunk creations as one Victorian theme only touched upon, you know, by the trick weapons, and it seems logical to me that you could get various pieces of equipment that allow you to do various things. For example, with grappling hooks that let you scale walls or pull enemies towards you, like spring boots that let you jump obstacles or give you like massive like distance clearing dodges, you know, like a speed boost type thing, uh, a giant spring boxing glove, you know, shit like this. You know, again, it's just rough ideas, but I feel like the fourth way to play is what's missing from Bloodborne. It would certainly open up, you know, a lot of potential for hybrid build variety, give you more things to collect, and it, its tech to Arcane is essentially Bloodborne 2's version of Pyromancy to Magic. Now, Dark Souls has four methods of casting. This would only be two, but you could essentially take a lot of the concepts for spells, and generally speaking, split them into damage, which would be Arcane, and utility, which would be tech. This also allows potentially more elaborate trick weapons to scale off tech damage, for instance, as well. Next, uh, I would like to see the alien mode and the beast mode to be a little bit more fleshed out. Or, I mean, maybe a lot more fleshed out, but, you know, the alien mode and the beast mode could offer on different things. You know, possibly having no insight for long enough gives you the beast mode and, you know, vice versa in some way, just as an example. Uh, beast mode could give you like a huge stamina and attack boost in exchange for being squishy. You know, the alien could give you I don't know, more iframes or spawn celestial orbs periodically or something like that. You know, just fucking make them better than what they were. You know, give them like an actual, like a true purpose. And possibly like both of them to a covenant as well. That'd be kind of cool. And then, you know, they perhaps have their own ending as well. So this kind of ties into a previous point. Alright, okay, so this is very fucking hypothetical here, but. I think a way of being able to create your own trick weapons in Bloodborne is exactly what it's needing. Now, I'm going down in the record is, I know this is pretty fucking out there, but, you know, okay, trying to keep this idea as realistic as possible, uh, so nothing too out there. In my head, anyway, you'd pick, like, a base weapon, and then you'd add the secondary trick aspect to it. So, I mean, you could just keep the base weapon and have, like, a powered-up version as the trick, like the Chikage or the Tonitrus. Uh, this way you could have like a blood trot tonitrus, or a fire chikage for instance. But you could also combine two weapons into one, so like in Bloodborne you've got a sword hammer, or a sword... sword, but you can just extrapolate that idea. So, you know, just imagine you could uh, pick from a base weapon, so like an axe or a halberd, or a 
a sword or the hammer, and then add the secondary aspect to it. So, you know, a, a spear into the whirly gig, or a sword into a sword gun, or dual daggers into dual guns, or a fucking fire hammer, so just the gun hammer thing. But, you know, just fucking anything, you know, axe, scythe, etc. The idea seems fairly doable, and in all honesty, it would really help set Bloodborne apart from its contemporaries as well. Alright, so my final idea is, it's a bit more nebulous than the others, but it's a way of making armour more valuable in Bloodborne. I personally, I'd like the stats to be a little more varied, given specific armour's at least some defensive purposes. I really hate that Bloodborne, most of your defence comes from just what level you are. It's even more extreme than Dark Souls 3. And in fact, just taking Dark Souls 3's system exactly would just be a good middle ground for a Bloodborne 2. Perhaps armour, I feel, could also be given, you know, slots or something you can equip your runes to in the slots. Uh, generally speaking, the more slots, the less good the stats are or whatever, but, you know, you could also combine this with, as I said earlier, about armors having extra belts or whatever that allow you to carry more vials or bullets, um, or, you know, armors could have slots that you can equip tech augments to, so this gives you, like, four different things that armors could actually control instead of just fashion. And uh, actually, you know, just quickly, for our 15th point, um, just, uh, just give me a, just give me a repeating crossbow. That's, that's all I want. You could fuck all the rest of the ideas and just patch in a repeating crossbow into Bloodborne 1 and I'd be happy with that. I'd be fine, just, just give me a crossbow. Just, just give me it. So, that brings me to the end of my list, and I hope you enjoyed speculating with me. Again, these are just rough ideas, so don't take exactly what I've said 100% literally, but I do think I'm pretty good at games design, and, you know, I've gotten a lot of comments saying people just wish FromSoft listened to my ideas, but, I mean, I'm not a god. Just saying. Now, if you want to expand on any of my ideas, or tell me that my ideas are just shit, or, in fact, tell me your own ideas, as I love reading them, eh, uh, yeah, you just fling them down in the comments. And seriously, as ever, a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel on Patreon. I literally couldn't do it without you guys. So, I appreciate each and every single one of you. And everyone that isn't a patron should definitely appreciate you as well. So, from the bottom of my heart, bless up guys. And I'll see you in the next video.